Welcome to the C-Suite Series, presented by Channel Check and Noble Capital Markets. Noble's an SEC-registered, FINRA-licensed broker-dealer and the source of the equity research available on Channel Check. Today's presentation features Excel Brands, NASDAQ ticker symbol XELB. Excel Brands CEO Robert DeLoren gives a brief corporate overview. Afterward, Noble Senior Research Analyst Michael Kopinski conducts a fireside chat with Robert and EVP of Business Development Seth Burrows. Visit channelcheck.com or click the link in the description to access equity research, news, and advanced market data on Excel Brands, all at no cost. Hello, I'm Bob DeLoren. I am the chairman and CEO of Excel Brands. Excel is an industry leader in live stream shopping over linear television. This year, we passed over four billion in sales on QVC, HSN, and other networks like them around the world. We have over 20,000 hours of programming time and have an outstanding team of managers that have all worked together uh, over the last 30 years in prior companies and 13 years in Excel brands. We believe that our company is positioned for very strong growth over the next three to five years, given recent uh, licensing agreements that we've entered into with our brands and expense cuts that we've made to our P&L and are in the process of launching a new live stream platform that will turn the everyday shopper into a paid social media influencer. We believe this is going to revolutionize shopping over the internet. It will become a very significant part of all e-commerce platforms and it will enable every shopper to become a paid influencer. People will simply think differently about sharing information about brands and retailers over the internet and social media platforms when they um, become a member of our new Ormi platform. To learn more about us, visit us on our website at xlbrands.com. Hello, this is Michael Kapinski, the Director of Research and the Analyst that covers Excel Brands. Stock symbol is XELB. I have Bob DeLoren, Chief Executive Officer, and Seth Burrows, Executive, Executive VP and Business Development and Treasury with us today. This is the first time that the investors will be able to view the company's presentation. And so we thank you for joining us today. The company will give a brief pr company presentation followed by a brief fireside chat. And so with that, let me turn it over to Bob. Well, thank you, Michael, and, and welcome everyone to today's presentation. Uh, Excel is an industry leader in media and consumer products, focused primarily on live streaming, both over uh, TV and of course, uh, over the internet. Uh, last year, we passed over 4 billion in live stream uh, total retail sales uh, since our inception. And that is comprised of over 20,000 hours of production time. Um, uh, suffice it to say, we're, we're one of the leaders in live stream selling over television. And recently, uh, we announced uh, that we acquired a 30% interest in a short form video marketplace that we were instrumental in creating. And we believe that this is the future of, of retail. Retailing over the years, uh, when you think about the evolution of retail, it has gone from bespoke, uh, an artist in making something for someone, um, to department stores, to television sales, HSN and QVC, and then to e-commerce, and now everything is evolving into short form video, uh, social commerce sales. And we believe our Ormi platform is, is the future of selling at retail. It converts the everyday shopper into a paid influencer and solves many of the problems that we're all facing today uh, in the e-commerce sector, given all of the changes in the privacy rules. 
So with that, we'll go straight into uh, the presentation and Seth and I will, will toggle back and forth here as we present uh, the core business and then we'll get separately into uh, ORM. So the core business today, we own seven brands and Seth, if you can turn to that slide, we can cover those. Uh, our brands today are Judith Herpa Fine Jewelry. Judith has been a leading fine jewelry brand, lifetime sales over two billion. Uh, it has been an industry leader in television sales of jewelry. Lori Goldstein, or logo by Lori Goldstein, is the number three fashion show on QVC. Uh, audience consists consistently of 350,000 people, uh, generating approximately 100 million per year in sales. Halston, of course, is the great iconic American brand. And we acquired Halston in two steps over the last five or six years and recently entered into a 25-year master license agreement with G3 Apparel Group, where they are using Halston to replace their Calvin Klein business, which was a $1.5 billion business. And there's a tremendous amount of upside for us and for G3 in Halston. Isaac Mizrahi, of course, another iconic American brand. Isaac is the number one fashion show on QVC today. Audience size there is approximately 1 million viewers every time Isaac goes on air, generating sales of approximately 180 million per year. Uh, sea Wonder by Christian Siriano is a relatively new brand. Sea Wonder was founded by Chris Birch, Tori Birch's husband. And we recruited Christian Siriano to be the creative director. We launched last year in Q3. To uh, Christian on HSN. It has quickly become one of the top shows on HSN. In fact, we were uh, nominated for Bender of the Year because of our success with this launch. And we anticipate that this business will double on HSN in 2024. Longerberger is a home products brand that we acquired about three years ago. Longberger was a direct sales company. In fact, it was one of the largest in the country at its height. It did about 1.2 billion per year. It had 150,000 women selling handcrafted maple wood baskets, which is what they've been known for since 1896. And we used the Longer River to be the test pilot for the technology that we created. We had 5,000 nano influencers that participated in all of the beta testing, uh, getting the ORMI technology ready to go. And of course, uh, Longer Burger, Seawander, Isaac, and the rest of our brands will all be on the ORMI platform with third party brands. And the most recent brand that we brought to the market, and I say brought to the market because we did um, buy this brand, we created a joint venture with uh, the iconic model, Christy Brinkley. And the brand is called Tower Hill. It is the name of her <clears throat> estate in the Hamptons. And this brand will launch on HSN mid-March this year. And we will roll it out to other retailers uh, around the world in, in categories well beyond apparel. We're <clears throat> very excited about Christy. She has a tremendous following, as uh, most people know. If you ask any woman on the street, name five top fashion models. Christy Brinkley is likely to be one of those names that, that come up. So with that, and I'll get into um, a little bit about our business model, and, and we'll bring up the some some numbers to explain uh, our model. Over the last uh, twelve years, as I said in, in my introduction, we have been a leader in live stream selling, particularly over television. Um, annual retail sales generated by our brands is approximately about 600 million. We have over 20,000 hours of production time. We have seven brands in the portfolio today. Combined across our brands, we have 6 million social media followers. And in 2023, we passed 4 billion in sales. 
<laughs> on TVC and HSN one. So moving to this slide, which we believe is the best leading indicator of the health of our brands. And it's, it's total retail sales generated by our brands. And you can see, of course, in 2020, COVID had a very dramatic impact on our business. We, as a company, do not sell any of the retailers like Walmart that were deemed essential. And um, we came roaring back in 2021, 22, 23. And then the big pickup in 24 now is the addition of the master license <clears throat> with G3 for Holston, a master license with Jewelry TV channel for our Judith Rector brand and other similar licenses that we entered into for some of our HSM production with one jeanswear group. The next slide is um, P&L history for the company. And you can see historically from inception, the company was profitable. And in 2019, uh, unfortunately, two of our key licensees uh, went into bankruptcy, one into a liquidation, one in, into uh, a bankruptcy. And we had to make a decision to take over the operating businesses that these companies were operating. We had to move fast to maintain our presence in the retail uh, community. That was the first time in our history that we pivoted from a working capital-like model to a working capital intensive model where we were um, designing and importing inventory, bringing them into warehouses and distributing directly to retailers. And you can see um, top line sales uh, were growing through 2021 and we were able to remain profitable in 20, but then coming into 21, uh, there was very severe margin compression in our industry. Logistics cost uh, had quadrupled. Factories were delivering late because of COVID closures. Retailers were canceling orders. And for the first time in the company's history, we lost money. And then coming into 2022, it looks like the company um, completely imploded. But what's hap what happened here is in... May of 22, or actually in Q1 of 22, we received an unsolicited offer uh, from a private equity backed group to acquire a 70% interest in our Isaac Mizrahi brand. The, the, the offer was strong. It was at uh, six times royalty income, eight times EBITDA contribution. And we decided that that was the first asset that we had acquired and it was a good time to harvest, at least partially harvest that asset and delever the balance sheet. So what came out of our numbers is about 16 million of revenue and approximately 7 million of EBITDA contribution. And while all of this was happening, as you can see in 2022, we we completely delevered the company and put ourselves into a strong working capital and cash position to, to um, enable us to go out and, and discontinue our wholesale operations, which we did. And if we go back to the PL, um, in, in Q1 of 2023, we discontinued all wholesale operations. We cut $13 million of overhead to right size the company for the discontinued wholesale operations. And working through Q2 and three, we cut another million dollars of overhead out of the company. And that positioned us to return to a working capital model which is how we operated for most of our history uh, with some very strong licenses with G3 Apparel Group. G3 in their last earnings call indicated that they thought they could take Halston from 50 million of wholesale where we gave it to them to 500 million in just shoes, bags, and uh, apparel. 
and they indicated that they thought they would be at 20 million of licensing royalties, which, which would imply another um, 500 million of post-sale. That would get us to about 8 million stabilized cash flow uh, per year over the life of the deal with them. And uh, in total, 160 to 180 million of royalties uh, coming into Excel, most of which dropped to the bottom line in 2024. We only have forecasted the minimum from that license, which is 1.7 million, as, as well as um, forecasting only the minimums under the balance of our licenses. So if you think about where we are in 2024, we're forecasting um, between three and a half and five million of um, EBITDA. And, and that will be driven based upon how G3's first launch goes and, and how um, our interactive television business um, does, but we're, we're comfortable at $5 million today. And um, we believe that uh, we're positioned to very strong <clears throat> growth in the core business with our brands beyond uh, 2024, particularly with the Halston license, given the guidance that they, they've given on where they think they're going to be. So just to summarize what we've covered, um, Excel today in our core business, we own a, a valuable brand portfolio of brands uh, with significant upside and growth, uh, given all of the recent master and license agreements we've entered into. Um, we are back to being a working capital like model with a very, very high EBITDA contribution Balance sheet is strong today. We were in a good liquidity position, um, particularly from a working capital perspective. We have very strong receivables from all of our accounts. Um, we are <clears throat> positioned to grow organically and of course through brand uh, diversification and acquisitions. Uh, today, uh, we reach over 6 million people across our brands in our own portfolio, which will provide a good kickstart for the Ormi live stream <clears throat> marketplace. Um, we, as a, as a management group, have a proven track record of managing brands through multiple companies. Uh, in fact, um, we are the management group that really created the, the whole idea of brand holding companies. And uh, I would say that from, from a true balance sheet perspective, um, we are truly a, a, a undervalued company from an asset perspective. If you think about <clears throat> uh, selling Isaac, in May of 22, at six times royalties, we have forecasted royalties of around 18 million in 2024. Uh, if you used that same multiple, and I would argue that Holson is perhaps um, a stronger brand than Isaac, but let's stay with the six multiple. That would imply about 110, 120 million of asset value against 5 million of debt. Uh, and we have more than 5 million of cash and work capital on our balance sheet, uh, which, which with 20 million shares outstanding, uh, works to about $5 per share on the stock on the core business. We have not included in any of our numbers any assumptions about ORMI. We have, we have stated uh, to the investor community that ORMI is going to be a read and react uh, model. Uh, if it scales the way we believe it will, if, we, if it changes the way people think about sharing information about brands and products um, in, in social media, uh, ORMI has um, unicorn potential. And, and that really, summarizes Excel's core business. Great, thanks, Bob. A couple of questions, and I love the pure play licensing model. It should have very high margins. Can you talk a little bit about your outlook for the company and as you look towards this um, high margin licensing model, I would assume that you would have this nice swing to positive cash flow and very decent margins. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, we would expect that, you know, the company historically, 
uh, with our brand generated eight to 10 million in free cash flow every year. Uh, we expect that we're going to ramp back to that quickly, particularly uh, with the Holson license doing um, what it is doing. Uh, G3 CEO on his earnings call said we, we seriously uh, underestimated uh, the potential for Holston when they did the deal, and particularly on the international uh, front. And um, we believe there's a lot of opportunity for us to continue to create the kind of joint ventures that we did with Christy Brinkley, particularly now uh, having a controlling position, at least uh, operationally in Ormi. Because the challenge in interactive TV for many, many years has been getting talent to go to say Tampa for HSN or Westchester, Pennsylvania for QVC with Ormi. Uh, celebrities can do this anywhere they are. And, and, and it's not episodic content. It's not 30 to 60 minute content where they're say on call in studio for 10, 12 hours doing a today's special value with QVC. Um, this is 30 to 60 second video that they can do anywhere they are on earth. Um, and it's really going to change things. I think it's very exciting. And uh, in fact, we're going to do a special presentation to Ar Army and which I would encourage our viewers just to look for that video because I think it's gonna be very instructive on that type of app that I think could be a real game changer in, this, uh, in the social media uh, influencer marketplace. So please uh, look for that. Um, with that, I don't really have additional questions. I just wanted to um, mention to investors that we do follow Excel and that we encourage you to take a look at our research reports on channelcheck.com, especially if you want more information on Army as well, look on Channel Check. We'll have the video there. And I encourage you to read more about this company. I currently have an outperform rating with a $3.50 price target, which I think could be conservative. As Bob mentioned, there's a lot more asset value there than that and the stock trades at a discount to many of its peers in this marketplace. And for more information on the company and important disclosures and outlines of the risk in achieving our price target, again, look at channelcheck.com. And by the way, um, again, look for our research on Excel. And with that, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Michael.